Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. Today, Dwayne Taves and Matthew Mulliga talk about the important role of bees and how agriculture is making adjustments to make sure bees stay healthy. Next up, Greg Akagi brings us the Kansas soybean update. Then Kyle Bauer talks with Ryan Legrand. He explains the role of the U.S. Grains Council and how it promotes USA products around the world. Then find out what's going on around the state with the Kansas Farm Bureau update. And to wrap up, it's Plain Talk with Kyle and Dwayne. It's all coming up today on Farm Factor. Stay tuned. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're gonna find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray pump organ collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Up first today, we join Dwayne Taves as he visits with Matthew Mulica about the importance of bees in agriculture. Dwayne Taves joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas. And a chance to catch up with Matthew Mulica talking about uh, the Honey Bee Health Coalition. Matthew, tell us a little about uh, the goals of the project and why it's important. Sure, sure. So the, the Honey Bee Health Coalition has been around since about 2015, and we've grown to about 50 organizations. And so we, uh, you know, bring together the corn growers and, and soybean growers and, and, and uh, their, their associations with the beekeeping groups and, uh, and agribusiness, government, uh, user, uh, research, universities, and other NGOs. And uh, we're really trying to develop practices for uh, beekeepers and growers to have productive crops, healthy bees, and, and really just, you know, talk about, you know, push the, the message that we're all part of one agricultural system. And so we can have it all, healthy bees and healthy crops. We think about uh, some of the issues, obviously, that come up. There are a number of insecticides and pesticides that, uh, that we use in, in typical commercial agriculture, but there's a way we can coexist at the same time. Yeah, certainly. So, you know, if you have bees in and around your farmlands, well, you, you want to have your bees be placed upwind uh, of your spray drift and, uh, and make sure that they're, you, know, you have a good water source for them. You also uh, want to use a, a lubricant or a talc when you're seeding so that uh, the the seed coating doesn't rub off and, and, and get into the air and get on, on hives. Uh, you really want to follow the label. I mean, really, that's that's the the big thing. Those labels are de designed and developed for uh, for you know with with bees in mind. Um, if you do have bees on, on the land and and you know you have to, to apply a pesticide, let the beekeeper know. Communication is really really important. We think about uh, the West Coast uh, and some of those areas where uh, I think. Uh, the almond bloom and, and things like that, uh, uh, the bees become actually a little more critical part of the component and process. Yeah, and most, certainly. Uh, California produces 85% of the world's almonds, and that uh, is only made possible by two million hives being brought to, uh, to Central Valley every year. And so that's about 95% of the hives in our country uh, get put on 18-wheelers and brought into the, into the almonds during bloom. And... Uh, 
and and that's really you know what makes it all possible and and that's just been an amazing relationship between the beekeeper and and, and the the almond grower uh that uh that you know is is really sustained the industry talk a little about uh colony, uh, colony collapse uh, we've had some issues not really being able to pinpoint all the time there have been some mites and different things but Ultimately, we need to do more to, to improve the health of these colonies. Yeah, certainly. So bees are really dying for, for three main reasons, and, and these are all interrelated. So there's no one silver bullet if you only did this. It's, it's you know, there's a, the lack of good forage and, and bee nutrition. Uh, there's incidental exposure to pesticides, and then there's pests and parasites in the hive. And those three things in combination are really what's causing what we used to call CCD or colony collapse disorder. You know, now we really do know what's causing it and, and it's those three things in combination and so the Honeybee Health Coalition is working on all of those things in developing practices that beekeepers and growers can employ in their operations to to protect bees and to to enhance their health and uh, and people at home too can can just you know make sure you're following the label if you're applying pesticides in your backyard you can plant forage and and, and various uh, seed mixes in your in your gardens uh, and so there's a lot you can do uh, to, to protect bees um, and and really be good stewards. Well, our thanks to the Honeybee Health Coalition joining us on the program. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. After the break, it's this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families in rural Kansas for more than 100 years. We're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. In the middle of this current challenge, that mission remains unchanged. Our promise has always been to provide relevant, science-based education and information to help you make decisions to maintain and improve your health, build and sustain businesses, grow your community, steward resources, and raise the next generation of capable, responsible, thoughtful community leaders. This segment brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Marita Hauser joins us. She is a farmer, but also serves as executive director of the Grant County Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. And Marita, what is the importance of participating in the 2020 census and its effect on rural vitality and development? There's all kinds of ways it affects us in the rural communities. Kansas receives a lot of money from the census for a lot of things. We get it for health care. Our rural hospitals have got to have the federal funding or we're not going to be able to operate our hospitals. In Kansas, Health and Human Services allocated nearly $2 billion for Medicaid obligations in 2016. Education is, is another place that it really affects us. And one of the big ways that I think deals with agriculture is the way we feed our kids. In Kansas, 46.4% of public school children are enrolled in the free or reduced lunch program. So that's like $137 million 
million dollars that is coming. And those are ag products. Those are things that we eat. And that's provided then to our schools, to our kids. Another thing, the federal aid program for public schools, just for the public education piece of it, Kansas received $109 million in Title I grants in fiscal year 2016. So again, that's all based on census numbers. How that's allocated to the state comes from the census. That's why it's so extremely important that we count everybody. Agriculture is such a vital part of rural Kansas and other areas. That's why it's so important. Without agriculture, our economy in Kansas flat doesn't run. And we've got to have the people in our rural areas to produce the food, the fuel, the fiber that we all use every day. And if we don't count everybody, those dollars are going somewhere else. If 1% of the Kansas population is uncounted in the 2020 census, the state of Kansas could miss receiving over $600 million in federal funding over a 10-year period. That's a lot of money for our budget. And Marita, what's the best way for them to participate in the census? People who get their mail delivered at their house should have received a postcard with a code on it. If you didn't receive that or if you received your mail at a post office box, go to 2020census.gov and there's a respond there. Now, it will ask you for the code, but if you don't have the code, there's another link that you click and it will take you into the census where you put your address in. That is Marita Hauser, who is a farmer and serves as executive director of the Grant County Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. She joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Stay tuned. Up next, Kyle Bauer talks with Ryan Legrand about the important role the U.S. Grains Council plays around the world. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger-than-life personalities, and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now Kyle talks with Ryan Legrand about the role of the U.S. Grains Council. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer. I'm in San Antonio and I'm visiting with Ryan Legrand. He's president and CEO of the U.S. Grains Council. Ryan, I, I want to make sure everyone understands the scope of the U.S. Grains Council um, and what you do day after day after day, year after year after year. So the U.S. Grains Council, we're headquartered in Washington, D.C., but we have nine international offices about to open a tenth. And with those, we operate in over 50 countries around the world doing market development, foreign market development for corn, barley, sorghum, DDG, and ethanol. 
DDGs and ethanol, um, it seems like I wouldn't have thought about that, uh, but I guess it really does count as a grain export when that leaves the country. That's right. You know, we can only export so much commodity corn, so at some point we need to look to these value-added products. And what better way than to add the value in the United States, create the jobs in the United States, and then ship that value-added product out side of our borders. So we're very active in ethanol and distillers grains promotion. As a matter of fact, ethanol is our top priority today. I have noticed over the years from time to time you point out how much grain is exported through meat production in the United States. That's exactly right. We don't just track the, the grains and, and the ethanol that I just mentioned. We track poultry and pork and beef exports because, in effect, that is corn and distillers grains and sorghum leaving the country but in a different form, in another value-added form. So we track that and, and, and keep tabs on that and and total that in in the numbers that we put out when we talk about in grains and all forms exports. You've been working, I'll say, a bit of an uphill battle over the last decades with so many different tariffs and, and adversarial trade agreements out there. It has to be fu more fun now with a number of those um, trade problems starting to disappear. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, 2020 is off to a great start. We have a deal with Japan signed. USMCA has been ratified by two out of the three countries, still waiting on Canada would, to ratify it, which should happen in March. And then we have the China Phase 1 deal happening. So it's been a very exciting start, and we're re really looking forward for to what's, what's coming down the pike. Can you allude to what's coming down the pike? Well, you know, you have China that uh, is going to be back in the market for our products. They've been out for a year or two now, and all of a sudden they're making sorghum purchases. They're registering our ethanol plants once again to start exporting DDG there, and we fully expect them to start bringing in our corn and our ethanol as well. So that's just China. But now we've got, with Japan, we've got certainty in our number two corn market with uh, USMCA, we have certainty with our number one corn market in Mexico, uh, one of our top uh, DDG and ethanol markets in Canada. So there's, there's a lot of exciting things happening right now. We always think about Southeast Asia, uh, Vietnam, and, and um, specifically China, and we hear more talk about India as well. Are there other hot spots in the world? Oh, there, there certainly are. You know, a lot of people uh, don't know that Colombia is one of our top corn importers uh, and, and ethanol, and so is Peru. Peru is our fifth largest corn market and our sixth largest ethanol market. So a lot of people don't know that. Sometimes those countries get overlooked, but there are a lot, a lot of important markets outside of China, Japan, and Mexico, and Canada that, uh, that we enjoy working in. We have offices there and are active there on a daily basis. Uh, very quickly, uh, how, who owns, who runs, who funds the U.S. Grain Council? So we're a membership-based trade association, and um, so we, that consists of state, state corn checkoffs, uh, state and national sorghum checkoffs, and then agribusiness members and state departments of agriculture. That all, are, they're all due-paying members, and then we take those funds, and the federal government with uh, foreign market development and market access program funds match exactly the same amount of dollars that we get from our memberships. So that's how we're funded. Thanks, Kyle. Come back after the break for the Kansas Farm Bureau update. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families in rural Kansas for more than 100 years. We're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. 
The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau update. I was up in the field, I was working ground and I thought, gosh, you know, here it is the day before Easter and, and with everything that's going on, maybe let's do something fun, something good. And I'm thinking, gosh, I could, and maybe make a cross in the field with the field cultivator. So I came back and I just took a couple of pictures from up high. I posted it and I just, I'm completely taken back by how this thing has gone around the world. Everything I put on my Facebook page is fun, positive stuff. And because there's so much negativity out there and I thought I'm going to do my part to put something fun, positive out there. So I had no idea. I thought, oh, I'll get 50, 60 likes from something like this. And I know for a fact it's been to it's been to Germany, it's been to Brazil, Argentina, Romania, a couple places in South Africa, some other country that I can't even pronounce. I would love to know how many people have seen this. It just and the and the positive comments that have come back, I'm just so overwhelmed by this. It's just such a cool thing. I just hope I put smiles on people's faces and all the positive comments I've gotten back. I think I've done that. And I didn't intend to do that. I just, I'm a, I'm a believer. And, and I think that maybe there was an upper hand in this. It wasn't just me. Cause on my post, I put, um, cause I lost my father uh, about three and a half years ago. And I, I put on there, Hey dad in heaven, I hope you can see this cross. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made, roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to Western Kansas. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now we join Kyle and Dwayne for some Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk. With the guy who always says the problem with running down the future is most of us are going to live there, Dwayne Taves. Well, that all depends. Some you, will, some won't. Oh, that took a bad turn. Well, I said most of us. Everybody is, I'm, I I don't want to get terribly philosophical. Or negative, I hope. Yeah, but, but I mean, the, counts clo the 
the clock is counting backwards. Okay. I mean, it's counting down. Okay. You know, when you when 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 you get here, they take you home from the hospital as a wee lad, and you're on your deathbed from there on. Huh? Well, I mean, you're headed that direction. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Did I you, don't want to be morbid. I, I need to tell you right now, Dwayne. I'm I'm dying. <laughs> so am I. Yeah, we all are. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody. It's what is. you do when you get here, and what you do before you leave. Yeah. But so, don't run down the future, Dwayne. No. Because that's all I got. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. You know, the only bad part about that future is you don't have 2020 vision for the future like you do for the past. That's true. Yeah. Now, is that by have... design? Well, I mean, ha- for example, are there oh. things that you would have, if you had known what the outcome would have been, would you have done them differently? Well, I, I've talked about that more than once with my wife. It's like, okay, do would you want to know the day you were going to die? Yeah, that'd be a that'd well, be a big one. Well, it would be it would be interesting. Um, I mean, you could you'd probably pick up the pace. Well, <laughs> if you will. I mean, you'd plan appropriately. Well, and or you hope that you would. Well, and that's the thing too is if you're planning that, you would know how many finances you would need. You'd know when you needed to have your business in order. Yeah. And until the day before, <laughs> it could be total disorder. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I want to know. It's just, it's just too much responsibility for a guy like me. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking of something less significant, like, you know, whether or not you chose to invest in a business venture or not. Ah. Um, and let, the, the went south. The, it went south. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, did you learn anything from that? Even though, were there th- were there positives to be gained out of that experience? Despite the fact that maybe you lost money or you broke even or or worse. Or worse. Uh, many folks do. I mean, that's just a reality. All business ventures don't go right. as we'd hope. But did you learn something from that that made you a better investor in the future? Or just put you where you were supposed to be in a place and a time that, that worked out the way it was supposed to. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Yeah, or, or or that one led to something else that you never would have thought of because it went that way. So your fact or fiction question of the day, Kyle Bauer, can't let it slip by. Uh-uh. There are more atom there are more iterations of chess than there are atoms in the universe. Oh. Fact or fiction. Well, gee. Um do you play chess? Not hardly. Well, that's the kind of the way with me, too. I mean, I played it as a kid, and I can move the pieces around, I think, if I think think about a little bit, but I'm certainly not a chess player. Now, checkers, on the other hand. You're all in on the checkers? Well, not really. But (laughs) at least least you know know all the rules to that Well, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, exactly on that. I'll go with, that seems like a lot. Oh, you're probably going to say facts, so I will too. That's what it says. There's a lot of different ways to move those little pieces. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.